Welcome back to Diamond Drilling 101. Today we're going to discuss the core barrel, the inner tube, and how we should be chasing our core barrel with our casing. We'll start off with the anatomy of the core barrel. And right at the top where it connects to the rod string, we have the locking coupler. And below that we have the adapting coupler. And then the outer tube, also known as the core barrel, the reaming shell, which reams the bore hole behind the bit to allow cuttings and water and rocks and whatever else needs to be cleared out of the hole to the surface. And then, as you know, we have the drill bit. Inside the core barrel, we have the core tube. And the anatomy of the core tube is the back end, the inner tube, and the lifter case. Inside the core barrel, we have the landing ring and the stabilizer ring. When the tube is locked inside the core barrel, what the driller is referring to is that the landing shoulder on the back end has landed on the landing ring, created a seal, and the latch ears have opened up underneath the threads on the locking coupler. And the rest of the tube is hanging down below the landing ring. The stabilizer ring is there to prevent the tube from bouncing around inside the core barrel while we're drilling. And this allows water by. As you'll see here, the water comes down from the top, through the back end, past the landing ring, down the outside of the tube to the bit where the water can lubricate the bit, help drill, and clear all the cuttings to the top of the hole. To retrieve the tube out of the core barrel once it's full of core, we send the overshot down the rod string and this has a mechanism that locks onto the top of the back end and pulls the tube back up to surface where the driller and the helper can lower the tube onto the ground and then pump another tube down to be locked in to the core barrel. The locking coupler is almost as big as the reaming shell. So there really isn't that much allowance in between the inside diameter of the shoe and the outside diameter of the locking coupler. What can happen is the shoe can weld itself to the locking coupler and it creates a whole set of inefficiencies and safety hazards for the driller and the helper. What we recommend is that we keep the casing shoe a minimum of three meters behind the locking coupler at all times. On the next episode, we're going to discuss why we pilot the hole with the core barrel first and some fundamental strategies and techniques to avoid damaging your casing shoe while setting casing.